Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show that you've been listening to. You've just been sitting here waiting for it. Welcome back. Local Chat, episode uh, 47. Uh, exciting times. Thanksgiving special. We are doing, we're dropping this. Dropping it like a okay. mixtape right in the morning. Joining me, as always, is the one and only Ian Gibson. Hey, quick question. Um, can we just not hear the intro music, or is it not there? I said I was doing it in post. Did not pay attention to you. <laughs> Great intro. That's Great intro. Intro. Classic. Uh, we even mess up when it's pre-recorded. Also joining me <laughs> is Kyle Bailey. Yes. I don't know why. I fresh, said. fresh from Anime NYC and oh, still yeah. probably having a cold that I got from going to Anime NYC. Oh, yeah. Oof. There's all sorts of stuff going around. Yeah. How many how many uh, how many things did you buy? Uh, I only bought a couple pins because I spent all my money on Christmas presents like a week ago. So I'm I'm kind of I need to I need to play things pretty carefully financially until I hit it big, you know, betting on uh, <laughs> futures or something that sounds economically yeah. viable. Um, yeah, I, I bought some pins. They were pretty cool. There were some Mass Effect pins that I really liked. Um, they were very cute. Um, there were some other like there was a. I can't even remember. There was a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's what it was. There was an Avengers um, star sign sort of thing. So they had the different Avengers, but they were mixed with the different uh, like star clusters and, and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. So yeah, I had a good time. It was weird. The guy, my our mutual friend Manvir, um, I think you guys might know him maybe possibly. He bit, yeah. came with me and did not get into the con. Because the lines were incredibly ridiculous and he waited for three hours and decided to leave because he was standing outside the Javits Center and not in Oof. the convention. Dang. And I got in in about five minutes because, woohoo, press pass, um, which was great for me, but not good for him. So I had to go it alone for a couple hours and then uh, just decided to leave because it, there honestly wasn't that much stuff there this year. It was like... It was very it felt very trimmed down in certain aspects, even though there was a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, but. so we'll be doing we'll be doing a video on that at some point. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you got to go. I uh, the plan originally was for both Will and I and Kyle to go as well. But some travel plans fell through. But I'm glad at least one of us got to go and had some fun. I've seen some images both from you and some. Uh, Gundam people I follow on Twitter, and I was getting very jealous. It looked like they had a crap load of Gundam stock that is hard to find online. So, Oof. weirdly, I did not see that many Gundam things, but as I was heading towards the exit, there was a huge sort of... Uh, um, I don't know who was sponsoring it, but it was a, it was a big company, and they had, like, Gunpla stuff out. Uh, so I got some video of, of that specifically for you guys, because I know how much you like that stuff. Yay! Um, and I was... I, I, I went through alley and i didn't really see much gun plus which I, I wouldn't expect artists necessarily to have that but on the yeah. more branded sponsored side of stuff i really didn't see gun plus stuff it was it was it was weird um but in this one section that i did see there was a lot of it so be on the lookout for that awesome cool cool looking forward to it wait um yeah i uh i'm sad i didn't get to go i saw the pictures and your pictures reminded me how much i missed walking around new york city uh, and just like hanging out and seeing all the cool places. So um, fun. I'm definitely excited to get back into the city at some point. Uh, folks, it is Thanksgiving, which means we're all very thankful for everything. But the thing I'm the most thankful for right now is the games we have been playing. Uh, I'm going to go first just to just to, woo, go first. Um, unsurprisingly or surprisingly is the word I meant to use. Uh, we've been doing 24 hours of Roblox, and Roblox is wearing us down pretty thin because Roblox uh, gets old pretty quick. Uh, but we have found a game that is immensely fun, and I've been having a blast with it. Almost booted it up um, outside of streaming, which would be a huge no-no. And that is the Theme Park Tycoon 2 in Roblox. Uh, we've been streaming it a bunch. It is it is so... It's like Roller Coaster Tycoon... Uh, but you get to walk around on the ground and put things down and everything. Uh, and it's kind of almost got all of the complicated guests have thoughts and uh, they buy things and they have yeah. personalities. But I don't know if the necessarily I don't know if necessarily the back end of Roller Coaster Tycoon is in the game or they're just having thoughts. 
uh but it's been a blast. It does, it does seem like like the guest logic and the economy logic is nowhere near as fleshed out as Roller Coaster Tycoon. It seems like there's probably very simplistic logic on the back end. But in terms of like decorations, editing, track editing, like even just the pulling up and down the terrain, like corner by corner or half by half or the whole cell, it's all in there. And it's great. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. I spent the entire stream last night building a uh, train for people to go around. And then I built a whole train station and honestly it came out really great. And it's one of the few things like I don't get this proud of things that I make in Minecraft, but I was like all about that stupid thing I made in there. It and was gorgeous. It looks I know, so I, good. I, I got an surprised. Ian compliment. It was incredible. Um, yeah. Was I, I do want to take it back at some point, but yeah, for now it looks really point, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that came out really well and it's made me we kind of touched on this last night on the stream but it made me want to go back to at least Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 uh, to maybe start doing some scenery stuff and working with that and like seeing how that comes out and then also I know the Steam sale starts today so I want to see if Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 price comes down because maybe I'll just hop into that instead and cause I'm not paying 20 bucks for that game that came out like 80 years ago uh, it is currently $9 <gasps> see that's that's oh. tempting that's tempting it's not 20 it's nine we did look it up unfortunately it doesn't have multiplayer which is the other thing we should talk about with this roblox game which it does have multiplayer so basically you load in with your park and each server has like eight eight or nine slots of parks so you can like fast travel down the road to visit other people's parks gotcha. but what we did was will and i loaded in the same server i did like the two minute tutorial and then Will granted me building permissions in his park. Ooh. So Will and I have been building his park together. Um, we're both using his money and it doesn't unlock extra rides for me. So like he's unlocking rides because it's his park, but I'm still using the basic stuff. But it's still a whole lot of fun to do multiplayer building the same park. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 has that. Yeah, that's kind of tragic. I, I wanted to check. Uh, maybe I'll do this research after the podcast, but other similar games like Parkitect or theme i know there's like a theme park tycoon or whatever and see if those have multiplayer and we could kind of fudge planet something coaster. planet coaster that's what it is see if those have multiplayer so we could kind of fudge the rules there but honestly i i would oh, love God. to oh, if we could new figure sandbox out series yeah a new <laughs> sandbox series or something either with this theme park tycoon i wonder if we can get into the code like do a little hacking grab that code and just remix that game uh, and like add yeah. our own stuff to it so we don't really have to uh, do the workarounds but who knows um, that's been super fun I've really been enjoying that uh, other game I have been playing I spent Sunday I want to say I played through all of unpacking uh, really really fun uh, I I loved everything about it there was a, a fantastic moment where I think I was unpacking the college dorm and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this, like, oh, there's nowhere to put the toilet paper. Oh, I'll put the toilet paper on the top of the closet. And I'll put it up there and everything. And I like unpacked everything. And then I, I finished with the boxes and there was one boot and there were a couple other things. I was like, man, this is like, I guess they're like teaching you that you lose things and all that sort of stuff. And then I see the blinking icon on the side telling me there's another room. And I was like, what? And so I <laughs> click on it and go to the actual bathroom in the dorm and I yeah. find the other boxes and I start unpacking. So I, I had a fantastic time with that game. I really liked um, being able to organize stuff, put things down, and um, it was just a blast um, to play. So definitely recommend checking that out. Great music as well, uh, but a nice chill game. I think it took me two to three hours, um, but you can, yeah. you can go that through it pretty quick. Me. And it's not like I was rushing or anything, but it's also a satisfying game. So. Also on Game Pass, so get Game Pass because uh, it's worth it. Uh, and then finally, uh, Skyrim. I'm not going to touch on it too much here because nobody wants to hear about more Skyrim. But I have... This is the first time I've actually uh, played... I'm Will. Uh, that's RimWorld. You're getting your boring games confused. Oh, mm. you're so funny. You're so funny. I love RimWorld. It's great. <clears throat> They're working on a new DLC. Um, Skyrim. This is the first time I've played Skyrim... Uh, other than like playing around with Skyrim since it first came out. And this is the anniversary edition, so it has Creation Club stuff added in. 
but there is so much in Skyrim that I think I just missed the first time I played the game. Uh, cause I'm just constantly doing things. I have so many quests. I have so many miscellaneous quests. Uh, I'm doing the Dragonborn official DLC right now. And, um, that's really fun to see like the Morrowind stuff and how they implemented it. Uh, there's a little drawbacks on that, which is weird. Cause you go into the tombs in the Solstheim place, which I guess they explain away by it being part of Morrowind, but also Nords were there, but all the like burial people are ancient Nord Draugr and all that sort of stuff, which I'm like, you could have at least renamed some of them to ancient Morrowind zombie uh, to kind of like play around with it. But I I'm having a good time with that. All the all the Skyrim uh, setbacks are still there, but uh, it's just like I just lose hours in it. I'll just start playing it. And Karen's like, Will, you have to come to bed. I'm like, never. And, I and I'll keep playing it. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the funny thing is, a lot of the content I think they added with Creation Club and especially the DLC uh, expects you to have beaten the game uh, because it came out obviously after the game came out and you had finished the game or anything like that. So I went to do this Creation Club thing called Blood Chill Manor. It's like, oh, sit down at the table. And so you sit down at the table and then it just says defeat the vampires and all of these statues of gargoyles turn into giant monster gargoyles, like Deathclaw style, and just start attacking you. And I die in like two swipes. And I'm like, I don't think I should be here right now. So I just uh, unload a save uh, or load a save and go back. But I'm having a blast with it. I don't know if I'm going to get to all the content or anything. I can kind of feel myself waning on it. But I kind of just went back to the main quest line and did a couple quests. And I was like, oh, yeah, this game is fun. And then uh, go back out into the world. So really enjoying that. I don't think it's worth the I think it was a $20 upgrade from the Legendary Edition to the Anniversary Edition. Um, which I do believe is just the price of all the Creation Club stuff. So it kind of works out. But I haven't done enough of that Creation Club stuff to be like yeah i'm glad i paid 20 dollars to upgrade um my, and my favorite part is that there's horse armor that you buy <laughs> which is uh the joke that will never die uh so that's all i've been playing i, I truly have been having a blast uh with that roblox game i i don't know how to explain it uh it's been a lot of fun um so yeah i'm gonna move on ian gibson what have you Hi. been playing I've been disappointed by the latest uh, releases in video games. We talked about this last week on local chat. So I dove into an early Black Friday uh, deal. Final Fantasy VII PS4 copy was $25 recently. I believe it's still $25. Um, so I purchased it and it's the PS4 copy. Okay, first of all, look, I'm playing this on the PS5. I knew this would happen and it's still very frustrating. Okay, uh, look, look. We're sponsored by Microsoft here. We love Game Pass so, so <laughs> much. We can't stop talking about it. Yes, that's a joke. We're not sponsored by Microsoft. But if you want to, wink, wink, Phil Spencer, we're here for you. Because yeah. one of the fantastic things they do is a buzzword that I've forgotten. Smart delivery? Is that? I think that's the bad buzzword for it. It barely makes sense. But basically, you buy the game and you play it on Xbox One or Xbox series x or s or one x or one s and it works it just works <laughs> what no i just figured what out laughing? what you're talking about <clears throat> and here's the thing i i got a disc copy of final fantasy 7 remake i install it in my playstation 4 and i boot up the game and the game looks fantastic and then i start playing it and it's like 30 frames per second and i'm like why is this game chugging and i go Oh, no. And I go back to the main menu of the PlayStation. And guess what, folks? I'm playing the PS4 version. They're they're fixed to this, by the way. They they added, they patched this a little bit after the PS5 launch, is that now when you're on the main menu and then you select the game, it has a little badge next to it that says PS4. And it's like, great. Okay, so I fiddle with it for a couple minutes, and I can't figure out how to get the PS5 version of the game, which which is a free upgrade for this. And so I have to go online and look it up. And it's like a four step process where basically you have to go into the PlayStation store, find the Final Fantasy seven remake store page, go to buy the game. And then there's like seven options, you know, like deluxe edition, integrate DLC. And one of the options is free PS4 to PS5 upgrade. 
you buy that for zero dollars and zero cents. You get an email from PlayStation saying, thank you for your zero dollars and zero cents purchase. And then it downloads the game all over again. <laughs> and it's another 80 gig download. And I'm just like, this is so stupid. And then finally, like I come back the next day. It's been like two days since I've wanted to play this game. Cause first I had to download it from the disc. That's understandable. And then I had to re-download it. So I finally come back to it and I make sure I'm playing the PS5 version and I start playing it. And it's just like, I knew that was an issue. I heard people complaining about it. I was prepared for it in a way. And it's still so stupid that I had to basically take like two extra days to start playing a game. It's frustrating. Am I crazy here or is that the stupidest thing ever? It's the stupidest thing ever. It's pretty dumb. I, I as soon as so you much. started talking about smart delivery, I knew exactly what had happened. <laughs> I know. My, my it, favorite thing too is when they announced the PS5 upgrade, they made Final Fantasy 4 or Final Fantasy Remake free for PS4, and then they made it so anyone who redeems that version can't do the free upgrade to PS5. Yeah. And I'm like, screw you guys. Yeah, it was a PS Plus game, but it literally had an asterisk next to it saying, like, if you get the PS Plus, if you get this game from PlayStation Plus, then it doesn't qualify for the free upgrade. It's just it's but if you go buy the digital version or you go buy a copy, a disc copy of the exact same game, it counts for the free upgrade. So it's just absolute BS. But that being pushed aside, I've played about an hour, 30 hour, 40 of this game. I haven't had as much time as I thought I would, but I am enjoying it so far. And it struck me. It's a little it's a weird experience. And it's it's because I realized something about me playing this game. And I wonder if you guys have something similar, which is. I think this is the first game that I have played that is a remake, like not a remaster, not a port, but like a full blown remake where they are making significant changes to the game. Where I have also played the original game. Do you guys have one of those? I was trying to think of any other examples where where that's happened to me, and I can't think of any because even with Mass Effect, I played a little bit of the original, but the new one is basically just a remaster. They didn't make significant changes. I, I would think it be like would Doom count? Like, no, because I think Doom's a reboot. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. And um, I, I think uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake is like that. I think they changed some stuff. I think I, they I, add I, or added in. But I know the, the point of the Final Fantasy VII remake, like the main villain of the Final Fantasy VII remake, is the fact that there's a, the original Final Fantasy is a thing. Seven is a thing. Well, 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 kind of like I'm just starting to get into that and I know a little bit of those spoilers, but it's it's less that and it's more that Final Fantasy seven was largely turn based. There was a little bit of an action element to it, but it was largely turn based. It was 3D kind of, but it was still really like sprite based, almost like isometric fixed camera. And this is a full blown 3D action game. I don't even I'm hesitant to even call it like an action RPG because it's like it's. 99% of the combat is me, I don't want to say mashing buttons, but hitting an attack button and then building up enough uh, ATB, which is like the active time battle, to then fire off abilities and spells, which is completely different from the original game. And so it's 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 it really is like they took a game that is one genre and they change it into a different genre and they added 25 years of not like, oh, we're going to take these 240 by 480 textures and up them to 4K or remake them in 4K. Like, no, they so, redid everything. Are you getting at that? Are you getting at that you didn't know that or you're surprised they did? that? I'm uh, neither. What I'm okay. saying is it's the first time that I have played a game originally and then played a remake and the remake is drastically different. Gotcha. OK. Yeah, it's it's just a weird experience because it's like it's like you play uh, you play Mass Effect, you play like Pod Racer or whatever. And you go, yeah, this is the game I loved. The controls are better now. They're not as wonky. It still looks good. They up it to 4K, but it's still pretty much the same game. Right. But this is like them literally coming back to something. And I don't want to say starting it from scratch, but using that as a blueprint and just adding and changing so much to it. And it's just crazy because I feel like that's the way a remake should be. Yeah. But I, I'm struggling to even think of other remakes. I, that have I think done that's, that. I think that's the big distinction recently of like calling it a remake versus calling it a remaster. Like mass effect mm -hmm. is a remaster versus, I mean, final fantasy seven is a remake versus dark souls. 
or Demon's Souls is kind of a remake, kind of a remaster. I and know. then I feel like yeah, that's true. Knights of the Old Republic will be a remake, not a remaster. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, so do I think you, that's you... the next game that might kind of be what you're saying Final Fantasy VII is. Are there any yeah. games in the Yakuza series that do that? That are just like kind of remakes? No, because even, like... even when they went back to like Yakuza Kiwami, which remakes like Yakuza 1, it's it's more of a remaster. Um, like they're remaking textures, etc. But but they are not drastically changing uh, gameplay elements. Like like I'll give you an example. Like in the first hour of the game, you 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 uh you and your your newfound comrades you bomb this uh power plant and you're trying to escape the city and in the original like you're doing that and it's like pseudo top down so you're like running across the screen you know uh encounter starts and you're doing all this and in this one it's the same thing but you're running through a th full 3d environment and there's pedestrians around you and you can talk to the pedestrians and there's chest hiding around and then you like turn a corner and then it like flips to a cutscene. there's like a big f boss battle so they so like 90 percent of it is there the basic structure is there but they have changed so much around it and it's it's just crazy it's what about, crazy what about something like link's awakening something that went from like 2d to 3d yeah but there were no gameplay Kinda. changes yeah i think for but a remake I, to happen you have to change something that is core to the game to something else mm -hmm. and i think i think what i really like about this is is the other element is i know the original game so it's not like it's not like when it's not like this comforting feeling where i come back to the game and i go this is the game i know and love but with those old aged mechanics and graphics those sharp edges worn away so it's smoother for me to play modern like with mass effect this is like oh no this is a completely different game but there's also enough here for me to be nostalgic about it yeah um and then just to talk about what 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 you touched on uh will th this is slight spoilers but it's been a long time i'm sure you guys don't care that much i was glad to hear it to be spoiled of this because it made me want to play the game even more. But basically I've seen a touch of this about an hour and a half in, but it gets even crazier later on um, is basically final fantasy seven has these story beats, you know, like this person dies here, this person lives here, this happens, that happens. And in the remake, they, the remake knows that that is their ally and their enemy because the fans want to be faithful to that original story. So any change they make, is going to upset the fans potentially. But at the same time, if you just do the same story over again, then they're going to be like, oh, it, it, they didn't really do anything to it. You know, it's the same story, so they didn't really take any chances. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. So they literally introduce that as the overarching villain of the remake are these three like spirits that come in and they influence the events. So anytime something starts to happen different from the original game, these three spirits show up and start influencing it. And they're like, no, 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 no. You can't live here. You have to die here or be like, oh, this person went a different way. So they didn't meet Aerith here. Oh, well, we need to force her into this street corner so they can still meet. It's not the same as the original. And so like literally it's like like the the will of the fans to have things be exactly the same is represented as the overarching villain of the series. And it's so good, guys. Like that's look, let me tell you something about balls. <laughs> and these developers have them because 99% of the time, something that I would do is I would go, you know, it'd be crazy. Yeah, we don't have the balls to do that. Let's just do what everybody expects us to do, which is make the exact same series, but with some CG graphics, right? Not only are they changing the mechanics up a lot, not only are they adding a lot of stuff that's working really well, like like padding and environmental world building and all this stuff that, that adds so much to it, but they're also adding the element of this kind of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge to the fans like, hey, things are going to be different, but sometimes your overbearing expectations knowing the source material is more of a bad thing than a good thing when it comes to a remake. So we're going to make you the protagonist. And it's just like... I mean, the antagonist. And it's just like, I'm loving this game so far. I'm really enjoying it. I want more time to play it. But folks, I don't care if you play the original or not. You should absolutely pick this up because underneath all of that, one of the reasons why I love Final Fantasy VII is that that story and the characters and the world, it rips. It grabs you from the start and it's awesome. And you should absolutely play this game. It's great. I'm having a lot of time, a lot of fun with it. We, I um I, I was gonna say too just as one last point is I feel like a lot of remasters are 
one to two generations so they just need to change the graphics because most controls are figured out versus this is a much larger leap kind of like kotor will be so i feel like they feel like they need to change it up uh more and so i think kind of that's where it switches from remaster to remake um definitely in the monitor yeah because it is it is a three generation leap from ps1 to ps4 um and they take full advantage of that because they they could have very easily just been like oh we'll just do it 3d and everything is 3d now everything is cg we'll just polish everything up but no they're they're adding new mechanics and stuff as well to, to bring it up to speed and that's great that's crazy um sweet kyle sweet kyle we call him that that's what we call him all the time sweet kyle (laughs) you should see our discord uh what have you been playing my sweet boy uh uh, i i I don't know how to respond to that other than yes please call me that for the rest of my entire (laughs) life um no i have been playing red dead redemption 2 mainly because uh they added um dlss support and i started up a new game to test it out and was like well i started the game i have to finish it now uh <laughs> so i'm like th- i'm like 35 percent of the way through or something like that it's running really great it looks super pretty as it did before but now it's even more pretty and smooth and delightful nice who's that I'm just kidding. Uh, what, 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 what did she card. give you? What did she give you? Yeah, it's my IKEA credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I found this crazy hack that saves you money. If you need to make big purchases from a store, sometimes you can just get their credit card and it becomes an interest free purchase over 12 months. And then you just pay it off after 11 months. And then you just never you... use that credit card again. <laughs> it's it's weird, but it works, guys. It's great. That's how I got a couch for cheaper than we should be. <laughs> It's I weird. Did, it's like people do Amazon. that when they don't have enough money to pay it off after 11 months. <laughs> That's true. Uh, not to That's interrupt, true. but do you remember that wave of people that were buying things uh, where before 2012 because they thought the world would end so they wouldn't have to people pay things off? People bought stuff before 2012? Um, there was like a news I, story I, about it and this guy's like yeah we set all of our uh payments due in February because New Year's Day the world's gonna end and we won't have to pay for anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay so stupid yeah i love Uh, that though anyways uh speaking of idiots uh i don't know red dead redemption 2 (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna make a red dead redemption 1 uh reference but i realized the pete is it pete the weird guy isn't in stinky pete stinky pete not stinky pete the guy who like digs up the bodies in red dead redemption 1 can't remember his name near the church yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. dilapidated church. I can't remember his name either, but I know yeah. who you're talking about. I gotcha. Yeah. Anyways, that was the joke. Um, it was a good one, especially when you explained it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Red Dead 2. Uh, fun, big, like riding my horse. That That's about it. It runs smoother, technically. But Sweet. I've, uh, I've been meaning to go back to that uh, to just like tool around again. We've been watching. Karen's never seen Westworld. So we've been watching through season one. You only need to watch the first well, season. Yeah, that was was my comment <laughs> to her. Um, yeah, I think that's what that show the other day. I, I think that's all we're like gonna do. I just I remember I can't remember the specifics of it, but I remember as the season one starts to close and like the twist starts to become apparent, there were several things where I was like, "No, that can't be the twist," because there are several points at which they say that is not possible, and then they're like it happens to be the twist anyway. So I'm just like. No, no, you said that's not going to happen. It's just like, oh, God, it, it it felt like I don't think it happened in this, but it happened in Fringe, where later on in Fringe, they start to rewrite earlier events because yes. it fits their new narrative better. And you're just like, no, that's not what happened. You <laughs> couldn't know that violates the rules oh, you've already established. Fringe is great. God, that's a good show for a, for a hot that minute show- there. I was t- it's uh, I wanted to love it so much, but I think I gave up in like season four. This is not the only stupid moment, but there's this scene where the main character like does a magic trick for like the main woman and the main woman's like, wow, you know how to count cards. And he goes, yeah. And it wasn't counting cards at all. It was just a stupid magic trick. And it was like, what? It was, it was just the cherry on top. That, that means made me none of the writers show. were on set that day. <laughs> yeah it's um, just like oh my god there was like there was like a hot minute for that show where it was just x-files again and i was like yeah and yes. then they just tried to make it stupid 
Uh, but John Noble's great, uh, and Nimoy in that show was good too. Um, yeah, and I feel like like just going back to Westworld, I feel like Westworld looks so good, and it has so many good actors in it, so many great actors. It's just uh, the Nolan family are not great at writing. I'm just and I think um, well that first season is so good, and I think the first also the season issue is was amazing. They like made that whole first season, and then that show was stuck in the lawsuit stuff for so long before it came out. Um, that I think by the time they went to film the second season, like a lot of that stuff was mi- like a lot of their ideas were kind of old, so they were like yeah. going well, I also back think to they tried to and everything. They tried to outdo themselves because they wanted the first season. If you were part of the the Westworld subreddit, yeah, they figured out the twists along with the show, and like they yeah. were sort of like an episode, an episode early until the very end. It was like two episodes. They figured out the twist, and Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, who are the showrunners, specifically said. They were like, for the second season, we wanted to do stuff where no one could predict it. And it's like, that's not what you should base your show <laughs> off of, whether or not your your predict your audience's predictions of the show are accurate or not. That doesn't yeah. mean your show's gonna be good. It just means it's gonna be yeah. confusing as hell. And the second season was like they had good episodes that were that were like very, very good. And then the overarching story was just so much worse. Yeah. And I haven't even watched the third season because yeah, it's I've like, never watched the third care. season. I don't honestly I don't know why HBO is still like giving it a budget like they should just yeah. say we're and also like putting breadcrumbs in your show to lead up to a reveal is good writing that's like the like, point that's the yeah, whole that's point you want to do you yeah. want people yeah. some people to figure it out and it's not like everyone who saw the reddit post weren't figuring it out they were what? reading the reddit <laughs> post and being there, like there're oh. not millions of people reading like the west yeah. world like there was such a small small central community yeah. that was like a couple thousand people and they're like oh well if these people figured it out everyone figured it out so we must be stupid we have to be Man, I- I don't know. Yeah, I, I wish I could remember more details, but I, I remember it like also on 4chan, like people like figured out the twist halfway through, like you were saying. And I remember reading it and being like, no, that can't be the twist because of this thing that happened in episode two or whatever. And then you get to the end. And it's like, no, that is the twist. They're just ignoring that moment that happened in episode two. That was a lie. And it's just like, I can't remember the specifics of it, but it was one thing where I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And then it was like, no, it turns out it doesn't make sense. And it was just like, Ugh. I don't I Anyways. don't remember I don't remember experiencing anything like that because I actually thought like cinematically the first season is a triumph like it's just so well done and it's Hopkins, well made perfect yeah um the monologues are great and I remember I remember getting to a point in the show when it was like if you start thinking about it like way way too nitty gritty it stops being fun and I was like I'm just not gonna do that um yeah, yeah so that's fair. yeah yeah but, anyways Westworld's great Red Dead Redemption 2 is great um uh, moving on yeah. i mean ian doesn't like it because he doesn't like good video games i look i don't want to continue this discussion any further but i was just thinking like i bet if you made a list of all the triple a titles that have come out in the last what two three years i want to say like 75 percent of them have either been mediocre or underwhelming like if you think about like cyberpunk trash even red dead redemption 2 i would put as mediocre just because of the vast difference in critical reaction and then you've got like Far Cry 6. You've got all these AAA titles that are just not good. And then you have like Ratchet and Clank, which is amazing. So it's, it's just weird. Spider-Man's good. Yeah, it, it just feels like like AAA titles. Trash. AAA yeah, right. titles are just like, are just like, <laughs> I feel like the average of AAA titles is sliding, which is, I feel like it's a good thing. Power to the indies, power to the new stuff. You I, know? I feel it's, it's partially that like the quality is going down, but also the games that are being released are not finished. Like, yeah, yeah. I, can see that. I think that's like a huge component of it is it's just like release it. If it's not ready, we'll patch it. Who cares? And it's like, we're even, <laughs> even uh, Avengers like is a finished game when it came out. It had a little bit of issues, but it, it was a finished game. It was just finished to like a mediocre standard. Like yeah. there was nothing incredible or amazing about that game. It was just like, we are making a game. That's it. And yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird, man. Wild. Um, Battlefield 2042, okay. absolute trash. Oh. Anyways. Call of Duty Oof. Vanguard came and went. Um, yeah. I don't know, single person playing it. I just, um, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We are done with that, which means it's time for the news, which is, means it's time for us to pretend to listen to the news theme. So here it is. I am playing the news theme now.
here's the news. We're talking about news. Okay, it's thank you for that, news. Zach. That was What's great. Up, Hopefully we nailed the timing. I was singing. I don't in my think head it was long well. enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think we came in like 15 seconds too early. Maybe. 30, yeah, yeah I, I forgot about the 20 minute remix I made. Um yeah. Folks, it's time to talk about the news. There's not too much news this week. Um, also, because it's also Wednesday. Also, also. Um, My dudes. So there's some some stuff here. Uh, Ian added some of this stuff. I added some of this stuff. The one thing I, I just wanted to hit right off the bat uh, is some more Activision Blizzard news, uh, which <laughs> Bobby Kotick... This is not news. This is just... <laughs> Which is Dog like shit. it's just a follow up because we've been talking about it. Which is Bobby Kotick saying oh. he would consider quitting if he can't fix the company's culture. <laughs> to be clear, he did not say this. This is this is reporters saying that he said this to other people in during a meeting with executives and senior managers. Right. So this is not him publicly saying this. This is him no. saying, you know, maybe if I can't fix it, I I will quit. And it's like you're part of the problem. You are the problem. I just think it's wild in any sense that he said this sentence. Like. It makes me think of uh, the like me 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 yes me oh me and I yes. I they will fix this and then I, I will me. take responsibility if I do not fix this. I am Spartacus. <laughs> uh, it's just wild. Hey, listen, Bobby Kotick. I know you watch this. Uh, first of all, hate you. Second of all, <laughs> quit. Leave. Be gone, sir. Yeah. You have enough money. You were in Moneyball. Uh, so I know you have that ball of money somewhere. I haven't seen the movie, but I know that's what it's about. Um, I need to so the movie. That's good. take it's that such a good giant movie. ball of money and um, eat it because you're the disgusting. sad. The sad part is, is he's actually like decent in that movie. I know he's yeah, like good in his scenes. I was like, what are you doing? You know what industry loves sexual predators though? Oh Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. He should be an actor. Um, speaking yeah. of Hollywood, this is a slight tangent, but Karen and I watched The Running Man. Uh, the other day and that is a future yeah. game show and that future game show is hosted by Richard Dawson uh, uh, as many people know from Family Feud and I forgot that that man is a terrific actor um, he's great because he's just himself on Family Feud and I know um, he was on Hogan's Heroes but like I'm just watching it and I was like man he is a fantastic actor uh, and that man should have been in more things also Running Man not as good as Commando and not as good as Demolition Man, and not as Demolition good Man as Demolition Man. So good. Um, last action oh, hero. Last action. Last action hero is worse than all of them. Uh, but oh, I just <laughs> I bought Commando I on Blu-ray and I want to watch it. He's he's, he's real. Bad. He's the worst he's part bad. of that that movie. Um, Commando's so good though. Commando oh, is so amazing. Good. I bought the Blu-ray and I need to just watch it again. I have to go get my food real quick. Go get your food okay. real quick while we talk about stories that you hate um ian did you want to talk about anything in specific yeah let's talk about uh just continuing the activision blizzard uh we heard at xbox we heard sony say they are reaching out to activision blizzard to discuss publisher relations with them in light of these allegations nintendo has basically issued the internal thing they said uh they had an uh, internal response to the activision blizzard report saying we are looking into this seriously and we are as concerned as you are uh, so just a continuation of that Activision Blizzard news. Things still bad, probably won't get better without some major changes soon. And of course, uh, CEO Bobby Kotick sounds like he basically controls the board. He's the one making these major decisions and he's stuck in the mud. So uh, y'all should go on strike till your boss quits. Till your Anyways. boss quits. Um, this is a quick update to a story that's been around for a while. Uh, the patent filing from Sony that uh, was uncovered hints at some custom PS5 faceplates, or at least they were planning to do custom PS5 faceplates, uh, which is and related to D-brand. <laughs> when they sued uh, the other companies trying to make PS5 faceplates, even before the PS5 yeah. came out. Um, so this kind of hints at why is they were looking into it, but also... Do you think do you think if they start selling faceplates that they'll sue themselves? Yeah, that's the that's the Any, snake eating its tail. That's how it works, right? <laughs> Anyone who yeah, buys yeah. them gets sued. Yeah, exactly. all the time. Um Yeah. Uh and then what else is on here? Oh, there's nothing I really Let's care about. Let's just go down the list. Let's talk about, about Harmonix is joining the Epic Games family. I I mean, I don't think this is too surprising because look i'm just gonna say it harmonics has not been in a good place since rock band came out they've just 
Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at their list right now, and I'm looking at since Rock Band Four, they've had some ports of existing games like Amplitude to new consoles. Had Rock Band VR, which didn't go great. Drop Mix, which didn't go great. Cool tech, but just physical microtransactions. Uh, Fuser, another microtransactions kind of variant of Drop Mix, didn't go great. Apparently, they did the they uh, they developed Twitch Sings, which makes sense. They had uh, Attica, which I believe is their shooter, which I guess released in 2019, just came and went. So they've kind of been floating around for a while. So honestly, I think Epic is, uh, I'm not a big fan of Fortnite and what they're doing, what Epic has been doing with that. But at the same time, I feel like this is a good move for Harmonix. What do you guys think? I think it's pretty good. Um, I, I would be more excited to see them bring some of their older stuff to PC and stuff like that. But I know yep. specifically in their thing, they said they are working on stuff for Fortnite. But even if it's something stuck in Fortnite, I think it could be neat. Uh, I've heard a lot of reports um, or people telling me that some of those concerts in Fortnite are genuinely pretty cool and like cool experiences, yeah. even though I don't I don't care about those artists and stuff. It's it's, it's cool that a game can f facilitate so many different things like that. So I think this is a great opportunity for them to kind of expand into a market that may not even know what they're famous for. Uh, even if, if that includes people playing rock band to a concert as it's going on, like that would be cool. Um, yeah. And ruining the concert. Um, so I think that's neat. I'm excited for harmonics. I'm excited most of all that these people uh, are keeping their jobs not that they were under any yeah. threat of closing but it just means I yeah. mean, everyone's under threat of closing all the time <laughs> i think i think for me it was just kind of weird seeing the reaction a lot of people act like this is another great studio being killed off and i don't think that's the reaction you should have because again this is rather pessimistic but harmonics has just been stagnant ever since rock band 4 wound down if this was like yeah 2010 maybe you could yeah. say that but this would be upsetting but this is this is literally i you know i know nothing about their financials but to me this felt like if the news was that harmonics was shutting down i would not be surprised i would go yeah you've been putting out crap since then um and so I, I take this as good news. This is them getting a stronger, steadier future when they weren't really doing much. They were coming up with crazy ideas, but then implementing them poorly year after year. So totally. good for them. Yep. Um, so hot off the next uh, off the presses, hot off the heels of Wheel of Time, making a strong debut on Amazon Prime. Uh, before you ask, I have not watched the show yet. Uh, I'm excited to. I am also on book three. Uh, and that book is getting good. Um, they are doubling down on video games as they prepare for Lotor by, uh, they're apparently in a deal to make a Mass Effect adaptation. Um, did yeah, it rumor, rumor specify to TV to show? Yes, Mass Effect TV show. They are close to closing a deal on a Mass Effect TV show. When this news report came out, there were also, uh, I believe some Bioware devs, etc., who were like, hint, hint, wink, wink. And if you remember, there was, um... Oh, man, who's British Jesus? He loves Warhammer. Henry Cavill. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I thought it was someone. Oh, oh, put that on his headstone. Henry, if you remember, Henry Cavill posted a, a picture of a blurred out screenplay like a couple months ago. Yeah. And people unblurred it and it said Mass Effect at the top. Um, so I, I think this is a great idea because when I played Mass Effect 1 for the first time recently and Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 1... Like we were talking about remakes and taking risks and changing things, etc. No, Mass Effect One, man, just rip that story straight into a TV show. Perfect. Mass yep. Effect One is better than Two, in my opinion, because of how much that story rips. It goes, it grabs you, it's going, it's developing, it's got a great ending that leaves a lot open as well. Just, just put that in a TV show. I'm on board, hundred percent. Do it. Do Perfect it. Perfect idea. You heard that. Um, Do it. Lessons from the screenplay, which is a, a really solid YouTube uh, channel. If you guys haven't seen, um, mm -hmm. they outlined why Mass Effect. Their video is literally called "Why Mass Effect Should Be the Next Game of Thrones," and the guy who runs the channel and his buddy worked on a treatment for the entire series, and they like figured it out. And they were there was like a a whole sort of uh, petition to like, hey, like let's make this happen, and. It is ripe for being a TV show. I mean, it totally. is such good content, and and it is it is accessible content. I feel like shows like Foundation and, to a lesser extent, yeah. Wheel of Time are very sort of, um, not that Wheel of Time is necessarily sci-fi, but 
um it's more fantasy right yeah it's fantasy yeah, yeah. but they're, um, they're so heavily world built that it's hard to get new audiences in but mass effect is like basically future america in yeah. a way like we yeah. we talk about how their, exactly. their timeline is wonky but it's so near future that it's not hard to get into it yeah you know exactly it's so it's so accessible accessible so uh I, i'm excited i mean mass or um amazon does for everything else that they can do wrong they do a really good job with their shows most of the time so i think that this yeah. is a good i think that this is a good move totally 100 percent um Upcoming big PlayStation remake is reportedly Chrono Cross, according to Video Games Chronicle. Um, it was yes, one of the many unannounced this, titles uh, in the NVIDIA database list as well. Exactly. There, there have been rumors that a la Final Fantasy VII Remake, there is another big, old-school, well-loved game getting that huge remake treatment. Not a remaster, not an update, not a port, but somebody coming in and drastically remaking that game um and it looks like there are rumors that it is chrono cross which as you said was on the nvidia link list i don't know enough about chrono cross is that a sequel to chrono trigger yes I don't, it is i don't know it is. Uh, from from uh, sources i have heard that it's not as good as chrono trigger but also it's apparently people like it yeah so i i mean this is another one of those where i've thought about going back and playing these games but i feel like they're a little bit too old so yeah, do a full blown remake, make it like seven where you take some risks, you add a lot of stuff, you change a lot of stuff, you really update it and make it a triple A 2021 game and baby I'm on board. So this could be cool. Baby I'm on board. I need to And honestly, I, I like this strategy of theirs, which is again, we don't know if this is a strategy. This is all rumors where we go back to the games we had before and we don't do the full risk of making a sequel now, but we go back to those games that have not aged that well, but that are still fantastic. And we throw a lot of money in it. And we do a huge AAA remake. I kind of like that. I'm trying to think of other games, like other games that need that. Like think about some other PS one, you know, like what if they did that with the first Metroid game and they turned it into no longer a side scroller. What if it was a full blown 3d Metroid prime esque, but of Metroid one, there's just all sorts of stuff people could do with this idea of take the old game drastically change it bring it up to date um speaking of drastically changing uh resident evil 2 remake is one of those games yes that drastically changed yes. the game yeah that's a good point yeah you just made me finally think of that um yeah that's 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 exciting i i need to finish chrono trigger and then i can play chrono cross when it comes out the remake um Ian, I don't know anything about this next one. Can you talk about it? The ten cent stuff? Yeah, so this came out this morning, but basically uh, there are certain Chinese ministries that are in charge of approving or allowing apps on uh, Chinese app stores. And Tencent is huge in China. They own a uh, WeChat, which is, I guess the closest equivalent in the US is probably Facebook Messenger. It's basically the largest non-SMS uh, texting uh, and messaging platform in China. Tencent, that's where they get a lot of their money from. They own some other apps as well. I believe they own the TikTok. The Ch TikTok. Well, TikTok is Chinese, but there's a... I forget what it's called, but there's another version that's more popular in China now. And anyways, um, the uh, Chinese China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has told app stores and platforms to implement the order against Tencent apps which says that you are no longer allowed to update your existing apps or launch any new apps as part of a temporary administrative guidance against the tech giant. So this is basically the government coming in and saying, we need to investigate and reapprove a lot of your stuff because we're concerned you're doing things that are not good for the state of China. And um, this is related to gaming because Tencent has stakes in a whole lot of gaming studios like epic i believe crunchy roll just all over the place there's some studios they they own a majority stake in and tencent is largely operating out of their revenue from china so if all of a sudden china cuts that revenue significantly you could see drastic changes in the gaming industry because of lack of income and lack of revenue and lack of funding for all these studios that have tencent funding so this very early on the beat here early on the pulse but this could turn into something awful for the gaming industry. Who knows? We'll have to see. That's wild. That's absolutely wild. Um, yeah. I saw some people uh, 
talking about this saying it was re it retaliation to like them expanding their portfolio but i think it's it's probably way more complicated than that um yeah to just like throw blame on that uh and then finally who posted this squid game smuggler thing i posted it i just saw oh. this this is real uh somebody smuggled squid game copies of the netflix hit show into north korea they got caught because there were high school students watching it <laughs> and uh they've been sentenced to death they haven't died yet but uh folks roblox squid game it's very serious stay away from it it's deadly <laughs> Uh, God, um, this is just bonkers, man. I feel like Squid Game, I feel like this is gaming related just to say it because Squid Game is one of those huge, huge cultural properties. And it's so very, the game is, the show is gamified, basically. Yeah. And you saw it with Crab Game on Steam. You saw it with all the Roblox knockoffs. <laughs> I guarantee you Fortnite's going to have a Squid Game mode within within a couple months. They're probably working on it right now. So it's just, uh, it's crazy, man. World's totally. crazy. Uh, and I think that's going to do it, folks, because that's all the news. I, I did have a little bit I was going to do, but we kind of are pressed for time here. So I'm going to end it uh, because I am absolutely starving and watching Kyle eat has made me very hungry. So I'm going to go have some potato soup and uh, probably Delightful like four or five cheese that. sticks. Ooh, that looks really And I should order uh, folks, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Local Chat. Thank you, Ian and Kyle, for joining me. Sorry, Ian and Sweet Kyle. Uh, folks, you can find all of our content. Subpixelfilms.com brings you straight to our YouTube channel. Subpixel team on all the socials. You can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find Ian on Twitter at Think Gibson. And you can find Kyle on Twitter at Kyle of the Beard. Until then, we hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving, great Black Friday, and a uh, good uh, Hanukkah, because that starts on Sunday as well. So have fun, Aww. have a blast, and we will see you all next week. Bye.